You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. Now let's walk in his purposes. Welcome to another episode of Experience More. I'm Pastor Frank Montgomery, and my heart is that you would experience more of who God is in your life. Today, I want to talk to you about finding and following and fulfilling your God-given purpose, your God-given mission for your life. We're calling it being purpose-powered people. So join with me. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. Give me about 15 minutes just to pour some some thoughts, some scriptures, some points in your life. And I believe the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you in Jesus' name. I know that God designed every one of us for significance, for importance, for a mission that he designed, that he created for you and for me. Psalm chapter 33 and verse 11 says, His plans endure forever. His purposes last eternally. Did you hear the common phrase in there or the common word? His. It's His plans. It's His purposes. I want to be in God's plans, God's purposes. And I think it's only in trusting in God's plan, God's purpose, that we really find our, not only our our identity, but our meaning our significance, uh, our purpose, and ultimately our mission for life. Isaiah, God spoke through Isaiah the prophet in chapter 44, and he said, I am your creator. You were in my care, God is speaking here, even before you were born. God, God designed you and created you with his, his thoughts in mind. You're not an accident. For heaven's sakes, God planned and designed you. He loves you. In fact, there's other scriptures that say you were the focus of his love. He created you and me so that he could pour out his love to us. <laughs> that sounds a lot different than some of us who were raised by parents or aunts and uncles and grandparents and teachers and coaches that called us names like stupid and idiot and ignorant and worthless. And, you know, we, we couldn't find ourselves, you know, I mean, it's just crazy stuff people say about us. No, God has a plan and a purpose. You were born by his purpose and for his purposes. Come on, let's walk in God's mission for our life. You were made to be you and no one else. You're very unique. Uh, I I don't want to be you. You should not want to be me. God's given all of us unique gifts, unique talents, unique skills, at a unique time in our life, very individual. And yet he wants us to find our our mission, our plan, and it's by leaning into him. He wants us to use our unique abilities for our own unique mission that he has planned for our life. Today, and in our remaining time today, and I don't know that we'll get through all of them, I want to give you five questions that you can regularly ask, maybe not every day and or even every week, but maybe in every season of your life that you would ask these five questions to help you fulfill your God-given mission, to help you realize whether you're off track from God's purposes for your life, to, to remind you, oh yeah, I'm, I'm right on with God's plan. I know God's, I'm walking in God's will. Are you ready? Number one question that I ask regularly to myself and I ask other people to ask of themselves and I'm asking of you today. Number one, what do mature Christians see in you? What do Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled people who are on fire for God, have a relationship with Jesus, understand and know His Word, mature in Christ— what do they see in you? What do they say about you? You might say, Frank, man, uh, I, I don't even know any of those people. Well, that's part of the reason I'm putting this as number one. Because I want to say God designed you to have those kinds of people in your life. You don't have to live life alone. You shouldn't live a life alone. God, God will bring those kinds of people in your life. Now, maybe for many of you, you've got to be connected to the local church, to the body of Christ. You've got to find relationships where you can be honest and surrender and submit. 
You, you don't want to be making every decision on your own, especially if you're that 18 to 25 year old who's just kind of trying to figure out, you know, from I'm not a kid anymore. What's going to be my career? Where am I going to live? Uh, how am I going to believe? What am I? What's what are my own convictions? Who am I going to marry? Uh, you know, what school am I going to go to? Those are some important years. But even later, when we're in our 30s and our children and and, uh, you know, our other friendships and relationships and, and how we're establishing careers in our life and savings accounts and plannings for the future and vacations and who we're doing life with. And we need to have people in our, in our life. But then we get in our 40s and our 50s and we need to say, okay, wait a minute, am I taking care of my body and reassessing areas of my life? And we need to have mature Christians in our life. Do you have mature Christians who can speak into your life? Are you surrendered and submitted to them? And he's saying, Frank, what does this have to do with anything? Well, let me give you some scriptures. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 says, He who willfully separates himself from God and man, everybody say, and man, right, seeks his own desire. And he quarrels, quarrels against wise uh, or all sound wisdom or wise judgment. He's fighting against it because he's not submitted to God and he's not submitted to man. Now, don't get mad at me. This is, this is what the scripture says. And I'm saying when you're surrendered to God and he's your Lord, and when you're submitted to one another, and I don't just mean your spouse and I don't just mean mom and dad. I mean s spiritual, mature men and women in your life that you can get advice, godly wisdom and godly advice. Do you have somebody say, hey, would you pray with me about it? What's God telling you to say into my life? Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where there's no wise counsel, intelligent guidance, the people fall off. They go off course like a ship without a helm. But in the abundance of wise and godly counselors, there's victory. You say, man, Pastor Frank, my life is just a mess. I'm, I'm losing different battles. Do you have wise counsel, godly counsel, men and women who are giving you the word of God and God's will for your life? Come on, pay attention to the people around you. Who, who are you listening to? Who's listening to you? Who, who feels comfortable enough to say, hey, Frank, can I sit down with you and talk to you about your marriage? How are you doing with your health? How are you doing with retirement planning? How are you doing with your kids? How are you doing with your walk with God? How are you doing with your friendships? Man, these are good questions to ask. Proverbs chapter 13 says, He who walks as a companion with wise men will be wise. But the companion of, companions of conceited, dull-witted fools are fools themselves and will experience harm. Come on, let's hang around wise, godly people to help us get to where God is leading us. It's a good question to ask. You say, why is that number one? Well, maybe these aren't in priority list, but I think this is one that many people struggle with. It's very awkward for, for some of us. It's very uncomfortable for some of us to say, man, I need to talk to you about something that's really a struggle in my life. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's a, a behavior. Maybe it's anger or depression. Maybe it's uh, lust or something going on with my wife. Or maybe it's something going on with my health and my eating habits or exercise or lack thereof. Or, you know, maybe there's something that is just, you know, awkward. But who are you submitted to? What are wise, godly people? All right, that's number one. Can you handle number two? <laughs> number two, what is the witness of the Holy Spirit in your spirit? What, what do you sense deep inside of you, deep in your heart? What sort of spiritual direction do you sense in your heart? What do you sense from God? Now, for many of you, it, this might be an ambiguous thing, and it is very subjective. But what do you sense God's peace? Not just what makes sense in your head, but what makes sense in your heart? When do you sense, man, the Holy Spirit, I feel the presence of God in that. I, I, I feel like I hear the voice of God. I sense the peace of God. Listen to this scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything, including God's purpose and mission for your life. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And then you'll experience God's peace. 
I don't mean just calm. I mean an inner peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. And his peace, and this is the part, watch this. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. God's peace will guard you. It will, you, you know, you can be walking on on God's mission for your life and you find, man, I just don't sense his peace. Man, God's peace will guide you. It'll guard you. It'll protect you. And God wants to direct you towards his perfect will, his, his plan for your life. His word is a lamp to, to your feet. His, his word is a light for your path. When we trust in the, in the Lord, he'll guide us and lead us and direct us. Are, are, are we leaning into God? Is God le- leading you? What do you sense in your heart? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 says, Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, that peace in God, be the controlling factor in your hearts, uh, deciding and settling questions that arise. Did you see that? The peace of Christ. One translation says, Let the Holy Spirit, let let the peace of Christ uh, act as an umpire of your life. You know what I mean? Like an umpire says, safe or you're out uh, it, yep you're good or ooh don't do that uh that's a foul oh no that was good let let the holy spirit deep in your heart that may mean you need to do something different it may mean you need to go on a quiet walk it may mean you need to get in a closet literally and close close your eyes and turn out the lights and say okay god i'm just going to listen to you shut out the noise Shut out the distraction. Say, God, I'm, I'm trying to hear your voice. Maybe it needs, means you need to fast. Maybe it needs, means you just need to get in a worship experience. Turn on some, some music and worship the Lord and get close to God. Maybe it means you need to journal. But what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? This is a big one. Because the Holy Spirit wants to lead you, guide you, direct your life with his peace. Amen? Number one, what do mature Christians say? Number two, what do you sense the Holy Spirit is saying in your spirit? And number three, and this will probably be the last one for the day, is what, what seems to just flow out of you naturally? Uh, God created you with gifts and talents, as we said earlier, specific purposes uh, that you find fulfilling, that you enjoy. That seems easy to you. Uh, What just seems to just feel right and just flows out naturally? You know, maybe you need to quit looking for God's will in something really hard and difficult. You think, well, it it can't be speaking in front of groups because that's too easy. It can't just be doing math and computers and science and history. That's too easy. It can't be just working with my hands and building stuff. God, what do you really want for my... Maybe a good question is, is to ask, what, what just seems to flow out naturally? Romans chapter 12 and verse 4 says, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We're many parts of one body. We're all, we all belong to each other. Look at verse 6. In His grace, in, in God's grace, in His favor, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Now, many of you, you look at people around you, you might look at me and say, man, I could never do what you, what you do. That's okay. You don't have to. I look at what some of you people do and I'm like, man, that would drive me crazy. I, I just couldn't sleep at night. If I had your job, if I had your life, but God hasn't called me to your job. He hasn't called me to your life. He hasn't called you to my life or to my job or my, my world. He's called you for something specific. God's will for your life. What, what just flows out naturally? What do you have the grace for? What do you have the favor for? I have certain things. I'm married to Jessica over almost 31 years. We've been married. I still look at what she does every day for 31 years. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you think the way you think. I don't know how you process. I don't know how you treat your, our kids the way you do. I don't know how you deal with your friendships. I don't, but her life is blessed and prosperous, but it's very different than the way I think and the way I live. I, she's not trying to be me. I don't want to. I don't want her life. She doesn't want my life. What? What? What life are you following? Hopefully, it's what what God's put in you. What flows out naturally? Where Where do you just naturally produce good results? These are good questions to ask. 
Matthew chapter 12 and verse 33 says, a tree is identified or known by its fruit. It's not trying to, an apple tree is not trying to produce apples. It just naturally makes apples. It's a, if a tree's good, its fruit will be good. If the tree's bad, its fruit will be bad. Jesus said that. You know, the kingdom of God is about producing fruit. So you, can, you might say, well, I really feel like God's leading me to do this. But if there's no fruit there, you better ask this question. Maybe you heard something wrong. Maybe you sensed something wrong. Maybe you, you just were eating pizza one night and, you know, you got an idea. I don't know. But if it's not producing fruit, that could be an, an indicator that maybe this is not exactly where God wants you at this time. I think too many Christians are just wasting their time, wasting their talents, wasting their skills, trying to do stuff that's unnatural or irrelevant or unproductive for them. Uh, or maybe they're competing and comparing, trying to be like somebody else. God has a natural and productive, meaningful life for everyone, including you. And I just believe you are walking in that today. Uh, walking in God's plans and God's will for your life. Number one question is, is what a mature Christian see in you? Uh, w w number two is what flows out? No, what that was, uh, number two was, uh, w what's the witness of the Holy Spirit? What do you sense the Holy Spirit is saying? What's that peace? And number three, what just flows out naturally out of you? Man, I hope those are, are, are great questions to meditate. I've got two more. I'm going to say for sake of time, I'm going to save those till next week. We'll do a quick review, but then I want to get to these last two that may be as powerful as any of them. Join us next week. You might want to pass this on to a friend. Maybe send this, this, uh, this podcast to a friend or text us to somebody and, and say, hey, next week, let's, let's watch this one. And then next week, let's together talk about these last five questions that help us discover God's perfect will and God's plan and purpose for our life. I love you guys. Uh, I love doing life with you. Stay connected together. Let's do life together. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.